G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Saturday morning, almost sort of lunchtime here in Australia, so obviously Friday evening stateside. And we can see that the market is down. So yesterday it was up, I think 7.9%, and now we can see it's down sort of 8%. So again, the market has definitely taken a turn, and what I thought was... Uh, about yesterday was is this a fake out or uh sorry a breakout or a fake out and it was a fake out the market has uh rolled over still generally ranging and we'll look at that very shortly but things aren't looking pretty at the moment i mean look you know we can just go down and you know it's a bloodbath in the 24 hours and the seven uh seven days you know it's just it's not looking great and it's scary and look it's scary for me and it's uh, scary for you know even the longest term hodlers, trust me, they're a little bit scared. Not scared that they're panic selling and getting out and all the rest of it, but it's just scary to see things drop. You know, you saw your balance at some amazing price before and now all of a sudden it's lost, you know, 50, 60% of that. So it is very hard. All right, let's have a look. Again, 1.3 trillion. So, you know, still holding there, which is good. It's not the 1.5 or 2.7 that, you know, it once was, but still above a trillion, which is good. Uh, Bitcoin dominance is dropping 44.9%. It was 45, nearly 46%. ETH dominance has dropped. It was 16.4, so now it's 16%. And gas prices, nice and low. Still double digits, but low in general. So what I wanted to do before we kind of move into things is, you know, talk about, you know, do you have what it takes to become rich? Now, I don't consider myself rich. I've definitely come a long way from where I was when I was a young man. I'm in my 40s now, uh, and particularly since I've got to the crypto space, I've done you know, what I would consider pretty well. But again, everyone's idea of rich is different. I'm nowhere near multi-million dollar you know, rich, and definitely not billion dollar rich, You know, no movie star kind of rich, but I don't consider myself poor. But you know, you go to someone from a third world country and their idea of rich is very different to mine. So rich is always a relative term. But the process to getting rich is still exactly the same. At the moment, people see this market going down and unless you're an experienced, you know, sort of investor and someone who's probably rich or on their way to being rich, you, you won't want to touch this stuff. You're just looking at it, it's going down, it's getting hammered. Who would want to invest in a market like this? People who end up being rich do. Now, I'm not offering you any financial advice whatsoever. I'm not a financial advisor and I'd never do that. I can only tell you what I'm doing and I can only tell you what I've seen other rich people do. That's where I've got this. Number one, this is a, a at least at a reasonable time to buy because nothing is at an all-time high at the moment. So everything is on a discount. But is it the best time to buy? Oh, I mean, that's the million dollar question right there. But for me, and I know a lot of rich people, uh, that's this is how they do it. And again, I've you know watched things and read things from people who got rich, and this is what they do: Bitcoin's at thirty-one thousand dollars and on a decline. Scary. And do you want to go all in? Definitely not. But what was its old? What's the highest it's ever been? It was sixty-four thousand. So if you buy Bitcoin now. You're guaranteed to double your money if, and this is it, if it gets back to its old all-time high, which I believe it will, and I believe it's going to go a lot higher. I just don't know if that's going to happen in the next couple of days, couple of weeks, or maybe a couple of years. So is Bitcoin the best buy right now? Possibly not. It could be. It may be just rocket up from here, and this will be the best price you'll ever get again. Maybe not. So what the rich people do, and the smart investors do, is they don't buy things at all-time highs. They wait for retracements. What are we seeing right now? A retracement. They then scale into something. They don't have you know their $100 million fund and look at Bitcoin at $31,000 and go, let's buy $100 million worth of it because if it goes down to $24,000 or $15,000 or $10,000, they've lost a whole lot of money. They will scale into positions when things are going down simply because it's a market correction if the fundamentals are bad and there's all this bad stuff going on different story they won't touch it but the fundamentals are great for cryptocurrency and we're going to go into all the stories about why fundamentally cryptocurrencies and bitcoin continue to get stronger and stronger and stronger 
this is a market correction and also market manipulation in my opinion and we'll have a look at that so if you want to get rich you're gonna to have to get comfortable with buying things that are going the opposite way to what you want them to but that's a little bit more than that you got to be able to do some chart analysis and you know fundamental analysis and sentiment analysis and all that kind of stuff but for me I see Bitcoin at 31,000 and I'm loving it. If I see Bitcoin go to $24,000, I'm loving it even more. If I see Bitcoin go to $15,000, I love it even more. If I see Bitcoin go to $10,000, I can't believe how good of a price I'm getting. Because I fundamentally believe in the space and I think it's going much higher long term. So that's the hard part. People are going to buy at, you know, 31000 and if it dips to, you know, 30,000, 29,000, they're going to panic sell and lose their money. And they think, I'm just going to wait till I get in later and wait till it gets to the bottom. They'll most likely forget about the space if they see Bitcoin get down to uh, 21,000, 20,000. They're going to be like, I knew this was going to zero. I'm out. They haven't been here long enough. And then unfortunately, they won't get back into Bitcoin till it's sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 again. And they're going to be, all oh, right, this is the time to get in. It's, you know, gone back above its all time high. Every time something goes above its old all-time high, it's probably closer to a correction. And that's unfortunately the truth. And when it does correct, it'll quite possibly go below the price that you bought in. Not always, but that's just generally how things work. So for me, I'm really only focusing on Bitcoin and Ethereum at the moment and stable coins. So about you know two-thirds of the money I can afford to invest, I'm putting into Bitcoin and Ethereum. And the other third's going into stable coins because... It, I think it could possibly go lower. So I want to have some stable coins on the side. When I see the market turn around a little bit, I'll be putting more into the uh, into the cryptos. Again, maybe even the altcoins. I'm not touching the altcoins at the moment. They're getting smashed. But once I see a trend reversal, and they don't happen overnight, it's usually a process, then I'll start to be putting more like three quarters, if not sort of 80% of my money straight into the cryptos themselves, and then maybe only putting sort of 20% to 10% uh, of my money into stable coins, but always putting some money into stable coins. That way I've got money, you know, to buy the dips. And really, look, that's not the exact strategy because if it was, well, actually, I mean, I've only been doing it for a while. Maybe it is, but I generally feel like I'm going to do quite well in this space and just life in general now when it comes to investing because I understand I don't want to be chasing pumps. Once something's pumping, I've already missed the best opportunity. Can you still jump on the back of a pump and make really good money? Yeah, but you're probably closer to getting wrecked. So for me... I'm trying to buy things when it's like this because I just look at the risk to reward. All right, the risk is yes, it could go down another 50, 60, 70% maybe, but I'll continue to buy it as long as I've done my research. I fundamentally believe in it. And then the reward is once it turns around and gets back to its old all time high, I've probably already made crazy gains. Simply buy it getting back to its old all time high let alone whatever its next new all-time high will be. So that's what I want to talk about at the moment, just for this little segment anyway, is do you have what it takes to become rich? Because unfortunately most people don't, and they'll do the opposite. They'll look at this and be too scared, and they won't want to come back and touch something until it's in price discovery. Then they're going to be like, yep, now I trust this thing. This is where I'm going to make my millions. And unfortunately they might if they're lucky, be able to make that, but they're probably going to get wrecked and lose money when it corrects and drops back lower than the price they originally bought in. So, all right, just a thought. All right, market's looking brutal. Has anything done well? Quant, nice. Uh, decreed, you know, 2.5% is better than nothing. And then we're into the stable coins and then it's just losses. So, all right, here's the scary part. What has probably been hit the worst in the top 100? Right, Thorchain, Phantom, Near, Kasama, Compound, Polygon. There we go, almost under a dollar now. This was a $2 sort of 20 not that long ago. Cosmos, Bitcoin, Gold, Nexo, I mean, you name it. You know, Aave, nearly down. It's under, you know, $200. This was at $680. You know, the graph, whew. Synthetics Network, $5. This was at $28. Oh, I bought some at $24, $22, $18, you know. I'm, I'm lucky, the most of, you know, most of my synthetics network, I bought under a dollar. 
So, you know, it's got to go down a long way before uh, I'm really going to be any sort of significant kind of loss. But again, that's why I'm looking at these coins, just thinking they are on massive discounts at the moment. I'm just not sure I want to get into the altcoin space at the moment. So again, not looking pretty. But, you know, there is some sliver, slimmer of hope. So again, Bitcoin, as I said yesterday, we looked at this and I said, is this a fake out or a breakout? And it turned to be a fake out. Boom, look at that. But there might be some reason that all this has sort of happened as well. But again, look where Bitcoin is. It's still in this range here. So the altcoins are getting wrecked because Bitcoin is so super volatile. When Bitcoin's going up, it drags altcoins up. They don't go as much until Bitcoin kind of levels out and is, you know, somewhat stable. Then, you know, altcoins will go on their crazy rally. But at the moment, Bitcoin's on a downward trend in general and super volatile in a downward trend. So unfortunately, altcoins continue to get wrecked. But we haven't set in any more lows. This was a low. Don't get me wrong, 28,000 was scary. But we still haven't sort of broke this mark. And again, this is really what I'm looking for. If Bitcoin goes below 20, sort of, you know, 8,000, we can just round it up. And a proper daily close, uh, I'm starting to get concerned. Not overly concerned, but yet yeah, maybe we are in a bear market. So if this has some random wick down to like, you know, 22,000, 24,000, something like that, and comes straight back up, that I don't care. That was just literally a flash crash, you know, all of the uh, longs getting liquidated. And likewise, everybody suddenly starts to go short. You're going to see a massive pump up. And that's, you know, what a lot of these are. This is the shorts getting liquidated. I feel like it's a lot of market manipulation going on at the moment. So for me, Bitcoin, not too worried. I'm happy to buy it anywhere between sort of 42,000 uh, and 20, 27,000. And again, look, even if it goes lower, I'm happy to buy it. But if it just ranges in here, hey, I'm happy and that could last a while. Now, one of the reasons that I think we had this big massive sell-off here, because it looked like we were going to get a breakout, is here. Bitcoin and Ethereum tanks as $4 billion of options uh, expired. So again, I said it's Saturday here, Friday evening over uh, stateside time, and all the options ended yesterday. So Bitcoin, Ethereum and the wider market have taken a big hit in the past 24 hours. The two biggest cryptocurrencies are down 7% and 8% respectively in the past day. Could it be related to the $3.8 billion in options of contracts that just expired? And then they say yes and no according to experts. Because the truth is no one really knows. But what we do know is statistically when the options end, there's usually a ton of volatility. And unfortunately, it's generally to the downside. And then the next Monday, because they end on the Friday, we usually see an upward swing. As long as we're still in an upward trending market, and I believe we still are. We're just having you know, a correction and a shakeout. Now, the reason I'm still super bullish is things like this. Bitcoin whales accumulating. Ethereum whales now holding record levels of ETH. Now, again, I know people who are new to the space, they're going to go, well, how is the price continue to go down? Because here's how big money can manipulate the market. Number one, they're not buying from, excuse me, spot exchanges. They don't buy Binance and CoinSpot and, you know, things like that. They're buying OTC. OTC doesn't move the market. Spot price moves the market. So if Bitcoin is worth $31,000 right now, and you're buying at OTC, you're going to get a discount. You, you might be buying it at around $30,000. So you can take your $30,000 Bitcoin, sell it on the spot market for $32,000. You just made $2,000 right there. So what they can do is incrementally just buy bits of Bitcoin on the OTC market and sell it on the spot market to push the price down and short it and long it and do all sorts of stuff. And that's what I believe is happening right now. But the information is there. Whales are accumulating. You know, whales are holding record levels of ETH. So don't get me wrong, they can't short it to the ground because in the end they start to lose money. But they can continually short it. So say you got $100 million, right? And you want to get into uh, the Bitcoin market, but you think it's overpriced. You can take $30 million of that, of your, you know, $100 million fund and you can constantly push the market down. 
And when you're getting close to the end of your 30 million, uh, and you've got, you know, hopefully close to a price again, let's say Bitcoin was at 30,000, you wanted to try and buy it at 24,000. You know, you spend your 30 million constantly OTC to spot, OTC to spot, and shorting it and longing it the whole time doing all of that. And trust me, the big players can, and they do this, you finally get down to your 70 million that you're going to invest in. That, that's your bulk fund. And hopefully you've pushed the price down from 31,000, 32,000 to 24,000. Boom, you make your big buy on the OTC desk at 24,000 and it doesn't affect the market at all because you bought OTC. What you affected the market with by pushing it down was taking it from OTC to spot markets and again, most likely shorting it to get that better buy-in price. And that's what's happening. So I understand people thinking, how is it they are accumulating so much and the price isn't going up? Well, that's why. They buy OTC, they sell uh, on the spot market. That's how they make their money. That's how they manipulate the prices and particularly to the downside. And once they've got their positions and they're really happy, then what they start to do is they will start to buy small amounts of Bitcoin on the spot market to help push the price up because they got in at such a good price. And every time it gets to a level that they're happy with, they'll sell off a little bit. And then they'll buy a little bit here and there, again, to spoof the market into making it go higher. And that's the game they play. And for me, that's why I don't really trade. I like to be an investor. I like to buy low and try and sell high. And again, I'm not trying to pick the exact top. I don't have to pick the exact bottom. I just got to be thereabouts. And I've been doing pretty well since I've learned these kind of lessons. So again, do you have what it takes to become rich? Or are you just like basically everyone else, you know, what they call the dumb money? And look, even I'm considered dumb money. Anyone who's not institution is considered dumb money. But you can be like the smart money. You'll always be considered dumb money, but you start to do exactly what the smart money does. They don't buy into pumps. They don't buy at all-time highs. They buy low and sell high. So again, things at the moment, hopefully this will work and load, they're on fire sale at the moment. You just can't guarantee if it's the best price. It may go lower. But that's why you have money on the side and you scale in as it's going down and you start to somewhat scale out once it starts to go up and you're making profits. All right, moving on to some other stories. All right, so the SEC accuses the XRP army of issuing false statements against its leadership on social media. So again, this just continues to heat up. So, you know, the XRP are coming out on Twitter and Facebook and, you know, all sorts of things and just, yeah, making all sorts of accusations against the SEC. And this is really sort of getting spiteful now and it'll be interesting to see what happens when this all finally comes to an end. But, you know, sometimes you need to remember, don't poke the bear. And for the XRP army, you know, just be careful. It may look like... You know, the XRP is going to win this case, but, you know, anything could happen last minute. And, you know, if the SEC have been really provoked and then they win, oh, it could be ugly. So, you know, interesting times anyway. Like, you know, I kind of hope XRP, you know, probably settle because they haven't acted, you know, without any fault, you know, when you look at some of the things that they've done. But in the end, I definitely think crypto is, you know, are the way, you know, of the future. And I think XRP could play a part in that. But again, we'll have to wait and see. All right. Marvel reveals, reveals sorry, official NFTs will be available on v, VV. I don't know how to say that. Marketplace by 2020. So Marvel Entertainment said it had partnered with Orbis Blockchain Technologies to release non-fungible tokens or NFTs and digital collectibles on the VV Marketplace app starting later this year. The NFTs will include digital collectibles and comic books which Marvel fans can trade as well as display in virtual showrooms. So again, you know, how can you be long-term bearish, short-term bearish maybe, on this space when look at all these big, massive, you know, things like Marvel was big when it was just a little comic book thing. And that's what I mean. It was just a, it was big in the comic book space, but comic books were very, very small in the overall term of, you know, of kind of the entertainment space. Then they moved into movies and now they're into TV and they are an absolute behemoth and they're moving into the NFT space. What does that tell you about where the big money's going? All right, again, 
10,000 financial institutions can now let customers buy, sell, and hold Bitcoin through their bank accounts. How can you not be long-term bear, bullish Sorry, on what is coming? Yes, short-term, the prices could go lower. And hey, they could go 50% lower. But where's all the big money starting to you know, focus their attention? So banks and credit unions of all sizes can now facilitate the buying, selling, and holding of Bitcoin within their banking platforms thanks to a collaboration between FinServe and the New York Digital Investment Group, or NYDIG. FinServe currently has about 10,000 financial institution clients. Where's the smart money, the big money, putting their money? And they're not worried about the price going down. Now, what you need to remember is they're not so much buying the crypto assets themselves. They are buying some, but they're also putting a lot of money into, you know, the the, the mortar, you know, the bricks and, you know, rails and all that kind of stuff. Because they know that's where, you know, the more stable returns will come from. Don't get me wrong, they're still going to be buying Bitcoin. They're still going to be buying Ethereum. They have to have it to sell it to people eventually. And that's when the prices are going to go up. It's just not going to happen overnight. And again, they're buying this stuff at the moment while the price is going down. Why are they putting so much money into something that's going down? Because they're not buying for today. They're not buying for tomorrow. They're buying for five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. That is what they're buying for. Copy the smart money. That is my personal advice to you, not financial advice, but that's what I'm doing. I don't buy, that's not true. I've bought into pumps, but I do it very rarely and I don't put a lot in, but I'm definitely buying heavily into things that are on the dip. And even if there's a chance they might go another 50, 60% lower, because I just don't know, no one does. But all I look at is what is the upside if it hits its old all time high. And most of the things I invested in, it's triple my money. And even more so now if I decide to put more money in. I'm not other than Bitcoin and Ethereum. And even those, I'm gonna double my money when they get to all time highs. And for me, it's when, it's not if. Right, Elon Musk. So again, he said things about Bitcoin. He was super bullish. Then he kind of got bearish and everyone's hammering him. And we kind of don't you know, exactly have much more detail about where he sits with Bitcoin now. Other than he says you know, he wants it to be greener. But this looks like uh, it'll be very, very interesting. So Elon Musk has agreed to have the Bitcoin talk with the prominent BTC bull and CEO of Square and Twitter, Jack Dorsey. So we can go and see here. Jack has said, this is on Twitter, let's have the talk. And Elon Musk, being the funny guy he is, for the bit curious, very well then, let's do it. And it seems like it's going to happen at an event that should take place on the 21st of July this year. So not too far away, basically a month's time. I think it'll be good to kind of hear Elon's thoughts and exactly where he is by then. Now, for me, I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin continues to trade down until around about then. And then Elon probably comes out with something bullish like, you know, now that a whole lot of miners have moved out of China and they're, you know, using green energy and the council gets started, all of a sudden he's like, you know, uh, Tesla's now accepting Bitcoin and he's much more happy with Bitcoin and then that's when we get the big pump. Now, will that happen? I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, Robin Hood. So we all know that they were going to come out with their IPO. Seems it's on hold. So Robin's Hood, Robin Hood's cryptocurrency services are reportedly the reason why its plans to go public have been delayed by the SEC. So the, the agency has outlined issues with the company's cryptocurrency-related endeavours. So... Again, the long arm of the law still kind of holding it back. And I do think a lot of it is a coordinated attack. I think the SEC and governments and all sorts of things and, you know, institutions, they all want to keep the price of this down and as low as they can until they are ready to let it go. And when they are ready to let it go, I think it's going to go crazy. I don't know how high. I don't know how long that's going to take. All I know is I'm buying all the cryptocurrencies on massive discounts at the moment. I just don't know if it's the best price. Time will tell, but if they go back to their old all-time highs, I'm going to make 
buku dollars. I'm going to make bank. Let alone, should they then double, triple, quadruple, whatever it may be, their old all-time highs, you know, that'll be absolutely unbelievable. And again, I'm, I'm still fully aware that there's a good chance that a number of the cryptos I've got into may not be around for that. I haven't put my, you know, complete life savings into any of them, and I have the bulk of my crypto exposure in what I think are fundamentally really good coins, particularly Bitcoin and Ethereum. All right, last but not least, Guggenheim Scott Minerd says Bitcoin could sink to 15K. And look, this is a distinct possibility. I think it's unlikely at the moment, but I haven't counted it out. Now again, do you have what it takes to be rich? If Bitcoin goes to 15,000, are you going to panic and say, no, nah, this is going to zero, I'm going to get out and sell at a massive loss? Or do you have the mental fortitude and the investing, you know, yeah, the investing fortitude as well to go 15K is a great buy. I'm just going to buy more of it. What happens if it goes to 10? What happens if it goes to 8? Do you have it in you to buy it? I know I do. Now, he goes down here. Scott Minerd, the chief investment officer of the multi-billion dollar investment firm Guggenheim Partners, told CNBC on Friday that he thinks the Bitcoin could bottom out at ten dollars to $15,000 in its latest swoon. Whew. Don't get me wrong, it is definitely going to be painful if Bitcoin gets down to those prices. Because I've bought Bitcoin at well over. I bought most of mine under. So really, if it go, it's got to go below eight thousand dollars for me to, you know, really kind of hurt, you know, in the space. But you know, my altcoins will be completely wrecked. Ethereum will likely still be, you know, fairly wrecked. Again, I bought most of my Ethereum uh, at around the kind of two hundred and fifty to sort of three hundred and fifty dollar range. Some are lower and definitely are a bit higher. But again fundamentally believe in this space i don't care if it gets down to those prices i will continue to buy so that is my question for you i want you to put in the comments below do you have what it takes to become rich can you buy in a market that's going downwards i can i hope that you are smart enough to you know become rich as well and again i just have to finish this off saying none of what i said is financial advice i could be completely wrong i don't think i am i've done a lot of research and study on people that have become rich and the way they got there and again it was by doing exactly what i'm doing right now i'm buying when people are too scared and i'm going to sell when everybody is jumping into things at old at all time highs thinking this is going to continue another 100x it could, but if it does, I'll just be scaling out at all-time highs and buying in when everybody else is too scared. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. It's pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, but if you have, congratulations to you. You've outsmarted the market, and I'll see you next time.